The COVID-19 pandemic is the most significant public health challenge to face our nation in more than a century. And as we sit here today, this novel virus is weaving its way through our social consciousness, our outward expression, and our grief. Uh, I'm deeply saddened personally by the many thousands of lives that have been lost to COVID-19 in the United States and around the world. And I fully recognize the anguish that our nation is experiencing now. Today, I call on the American people to remain vigilant in our collective obligation to protect the vulnerable, to protect your community, your grandparents, your loved ones who may be at risk for severe COVID complications. And we must lessen the impact of COVID on, uh, on Amer African Americans, Hispanics, Latino, American Indian and Alaska Natives who are being disproportionately affected by this disease. This nation is not only hearing a wake-up call, rather we're hearing a clamoring for equity and healing, for a positive permanent change to health and social disparities that persist in our nation. As communities make plans to cautiously reopen, this means that we need to continue to embrace the now familiar social distancing, hand washing, and face coverings. These actions will allow us to move forward and contain the outbreak along with readily available testing, comprehensive contact tracing, timely isolation of known cases, and self-quarantine to break the chains of transmission. CDC is providing communities with public health tools and information to confront this novel virus. Personally, I can't tell you how proud I am of the men and women and the dedicated public health professionals at CDC and how grateful I am for their service and their family sacrifice. CDC has deployed over 5,000 personnel to the COVID-19 response. Field teams are on the ground providing local health officials with expertise in epidemiology, surveillance, infection prevention and control, lab science, and community mitigation. We've published more than 1,500 specialized information and guidance documents so far. And the COVID website has been consulted more than 1.3 billion times. CDC has responded to more than 20,000 inquiries for doctors and clinicians, and we've hosted calls that have reached over half a million more. With your support, CDC has been able to award nearly $12 billion to states, territories, tribes, and localities. These funds are being used to enhance diagnostics, healthcare worker safety, and the other important public health measures, measures that I previously mentioned. Through our partnerships with CMS and the Indian Health Service and HRSA, we're deploying teams to uh, the needs of population at the highest risk, specifically those living in nursing homes, shelters, and correctional facilities. This outbreak has shown a bright light on the true heroes of the response. They are the public health and the healthcare professionals, the first responders, and the critical infrastructure workers. But unfortunately, this pandemic has also highlighted the shortcomings of our public health system that has been under-resourced for decades. Never has it been more clear that our nation's public health IT infrastructure requires modernization to support and collect reportable, reliable, comprehensive, and timely data. When we confront any disease threat, CDC and public health departments must make real-time decisions based on real-time data. Data forms the roadmap and it informs policy. Data is the backbone of any disease threat response. As a virologist and a physician, I know the importance of strong clinical laboratories. We must equip our public health laboratories with advanced technology and the ability to adopt new pro platforms required in an emergency response. We must exponentially grow the necessary workforce to address COVID and future public health threats. Sustained investment in our public health uh, system of this nation is an investment not only in health and prosperity for today, but for the future generations tomorrow. Preparedness will be critical uh, when influenza and COVID hits the doorsteps of our hospitals and healthcare providers this winter. I want to encourage all Americans to be prepared, embrace flu vaccination with confidence for the families, themselves, and communities. This single act will save lives. As a person of faith and good conscience, I ask all of you to see the possible. We must resolve, we can, and we must lessen the health disparities in this nation. I leave you with a reminder from our mutual friend, the, dear, the late dear Congressman Cummings, when he used to say the cost of doing nothing isn't nothing. As CDC director and a grandfather, I ask you to continue to work with me to build the public health system 
our nation not only needs, but that it deserves. Now is the time 